Hello everyone, today we are going to look at um, kinetic equilibrium pulley system problem. So we have this inclined plane here of inclination theta. It's a smooth ramp, that means no friction. We have an object M1 in contact with the ramp and we have an object M2 hanging on the side of the ramp without touching it. The two objects are connected via a lie string and an ideal pulley and the whole system is moving at constant velocity counterclockwise. Constant velocity because this again is a kinetic equilibrium problem. As opposed to static equilibrium when the system or an object would be at rest, in this case the system is moving but it does not accelerate. Uh, the given in this problem are the angle of inclination theta and a little g, and what they want us to calculate or determine is the relationship between M2 and M1. For example, find out what's the ratio of M2 over M1 that we need to have for this kind of a problem in order for the system to be in kinetic equilibrium. So uh, you see over here the pre-body diagram that I already showed you how to um, develop in one of my previous pulley system videos. Uh, just very fast, let's go ahead and do a magnitude check for each of the two objects. Remember, whenever objects are in equilibrium, whether static or kinetic, the forces acting upon those objects must be balanced. So, for M2, we have M2G vertically down and tension T vertically up. They must be equal in magnitude. An opposite in direction, M to G is 5 centimeters and so is T, so we are okay with M2 magnitude check. For M1, we need to check the magnitudes along the, the, the ramp, parallel to the ramp, and perpendicular to the ramp. So along the ramp, we have to have this T which is 5, we knew from here, it has to be the same exact T, 5 centimeters, and then we check that against M1G sine theta, and that's also 5, so we are okay with the X, X forces, uh, the forces acting parallel to the plane. The forces acting perpendicular to the plane would be the normal force, which is 4 centimeters in length, and M1G cosine theta, which is also 4, so those balance as well. We did a magnitude check, so we are okay with that step of the problem. We now move on to the equations, and we have two sets of equations, one for M2, and then two, uh, another set for X and Y for M1. M2 only has forces going in one direction, so therefore the F net here, 2 equals 0, and M1 has forces going in the x direction, so we have F net 1x equals 0, and we have forces going in the y direction, so we have F net 1y equals 0. Let's go ahead and develop this. Uh, equations further to see where we get. So for M2, for M2 over here, we are just going to consider the positive direction that's already dictated by the way the system moves. Um, so positive would be downward, which means M2G is positive, T is negative. We have two vectors uh, whose vector sum must be equal to zero, so M2G is positive and T is negative. Let's keep that color coded. M2G in black, T negative, T in green. When we simplify this, we get the equation M2G minus T equals zero. For M1, let's go ahead and start with the X equations. The X positive direction is up the ramp, so we have T positive M1G sine theta negative, which means we have a vector sum of two forces that must be equal to zero. One of them is positive, that's your tension, and one of them is negative, that's your M1G sine theta. When we simplify this, we are going to have T minus M1G sine theta equals zero. 
for the y equations, we have a positive, I chose positive to be in that direction, and I clearly showed it on the diagram. Therefore, n is positive, m1g cosine theta is negative. So we have a vector sum of two vectors equal to zero. The positive one, the positive one is the normal force. There we go. And the negative one is m1g cosine theta. When we simplify this, we end up with the equation n minus m1g cosine theta equals zero. So now we have one, two, three equations to consider. And we need to remember that we need to calculate the ratio of m2 over m1. M2 shows here, and M1 shows here and here. The first thing I would like to get rid of is tension. Um, so therefore, I'm going to add up these two equations to see how tension will uh, be eliminated and what am I going to be left with if I do that. So M2G minus T plus T minus M1G sine theta is going to be 0 plus 0 is 0, t and minus t cancel out, I end up with m2g minus m1g sine theta equals 0, so it looks like I don't need this equation anymore, because everything in this equation is given g and theta except for m2 and m1, so therefore if I rearrange this equation, I get m2 g equals m1 g sine theta, divide both sides by m1, actually I can divide both sides by m1 g, that's going